Hey everyone, um, today we're working with uh, the um, flight simulator, uh, how to plan for an IFR route. Uh, we're using two websites, um, FlightAware and Aeroplanner.com. Now these are the only two I really use. Uh, for the FlightAware one, we're going to go to FlightAware.com slash statistics slash IFR space thingy route. And then over here, it's just Aeroplanner.com. Now for the first one, for flight aware, I go ahead and try to figure out if a plane's already flown there, which usually if the course that we're going on is semi-realistic, then there'll probably be a plane that's flown there at least once. So here I have a little checklist of certain things, just general things you should have. Uh, we have our distance, cruising altitude, runway departure, standard instrument departure, uh, what waypoints we'll be using, our runway arrival, our approach frequency, and our standard um, terminal arrival stuff. So with that, let's go and get started. Uh, I chose Washington, uh, KDCA, and um, that's where I normally fly out of, and Nashville, KBNA. So we'll go ahead and type in the ICAO codes, ICAO codes, KBNA, which are already here, because I've done this a few times, and we'll go ahead and find the route. Now, if you notice, there's been quite a few planes flying on this one. Now, Right here is where all of the, um, those are all the waypoints. And if we scroll over, it just says the distance right there. And with that, we go ahead and choose whichever one we want. Uh, I'm going to choose the Air Wisconsin 3615, just because I like the route that it takes. Um, just straight in, except we're going to edit a few different things. We are going to switch. Actually, we're going to come back to that one. <coughs> and this gives us the route it took. And but I don't want to use this one, and we'll get into that in a little bit. And, uh, there's a few runways, and we're going to try to go over those in further detail here in a moment. Um, but first, we want to worry about our departure. So we'll be focusing on DCA. Right now, let's go ahead and take a look up here. Um, anything we need to write down. Um, we're going to go with our planned for our distance. So we can go ahead and type in 580 statute miles. And other than that, it just shows our route right here. Now, the first ones are fine to keep, but the last ones are pretty much up to you if you want to change them or not. Uh, the last two are what you're going to be using for your arrival and we're gonna have to change uh, our final two because I don't want to land on the runway that he used uh, it's just inconvenient honestly um, with that we'll go ahead and switch over to our aeroplanner.com now this is another really super awesome website that helps you plan for stuff and just like the other one we're gonna type in our airport that we're defar <laughs> departing from so KDCA Okay, sorry. Um, and here we go. We typed in KDCA, and it gives us all this really info useful information here. And first, we'll go ahead and take a look at that one. Kind of it. And this is the airport we're departing from. And you see here, we have really, really small airport in a very large city. So we're actually going to get over some restrictions here in a second. So with that, we're going to switch over to our arrow planner after we type in where we want to go. We're going to go to the tab called Terminal Procedures. And from here, we're going to see if there's any... This is going to give us airport information, I believe. It's either this one or this one. Sometimes I can't remember which one it was. Here we go. Uh, for some reason, I cannot remember how to turn this thing, so I'm sorry. You guys are going to have to tilt your heads or something. Um, but if you notice, here is our airport, the Washington DCA. And if you'll notice, right here, we have a P-56. That is the prohibited area, P-56. That is the Washington, D.C. and Capitol uh, restricted area, if that's just something you may memorize, may not. Um, I just know that because I live near here. So your prohibited areas, you know, of course, you can't fly through them. So as soon as you take off, for example, taking off from runway 1, going straight north, you're going to have to make a 4-degree bank to the left, I believe, to get out of that or else you're going to hit over the Washington Monument 
and you're going to be in a lot of trouble. But luckily we're going to be taking the R185. Now, don't ask me what these mean. This is routes, I suppose. I'm honestly, I'm I'm still learning myself. But anyway, we're going to be taking off from runway 19. We can go back over here. You can see right here, taking off runway 19. It's going to be a south departure. And now we got to figure out how we're going to leave once we depart. So what I like to do is go to the takeoff minimums, open that up, and it gives you the nice list of all these local airports. But the airport we want is in Washington. So we're going to scroll all the way to Washington. And we're going to see here, Washington, Ronald Reagan. That's us. Now, if we zoom in, we'll see departure procedures. And we said that we're going to take off from runway 19. And we see that it's highlighted in bold right here. So we're going to say climb heading 185, which is close to our uh, runway heading, to 500 feet. Then we're going to turn right, maintain 5,000, and then we'll continue on. And that'll get us out of the city. And that's what we're worried about. So if you want, you can go ahead and write down these um, plans if you need to. Sometimes airports have them, sometimes they don't. Um, or we can go ahead and fill in a few more things in our flight plan. Uh, we said we're taking off runway 19. And we'll worry about our standard instrument departure. That'll probably be what we're doing here. And we said we were using the R185. That's probably not what you would put in, especially if you're typing this in on a um, FMC. But uh, like I said, we're all still learning here, so we're not going to worry about the whole flight computer stuff right now. Um, if that just helps you remember it, you know, more power to you. We're not uh, given specific waypoints, vectors to go to. Um, now for our VIA, this is where we jump back over to our Air Wisconsin flight. Uh, remember we showed all of these little routes we will go back here so we can get a better idea we said we've taken the Air Wisconsin route and we'll, we're not using the same plane uh, we'll use a different one but we can keep the same altitude so we'll be at 30,000 feet and we can go ahead for now we'll keep the same routes whoops well I guess that is a good way to get there but uh, we'll copy that and put that in our VM now the first ones you can edit the minimum the middle ones generally don't have to and the final ones you usually edit to your liking um, now I'm sure a few of you are like well wait doesn't that depend on the wind direction and doesn't the approach tell you where to go well yes but I don't like to follow the towers I know that's really bad habit I have right now but I, I the, the whole simulator with me we just don't we don't resonate together so I ignore them, they ignore me, it's a win-win relationship. Uh, with that, we're just going to quickly ignore that. Uh, we're pretty much done. We don't have to worry about any restrictions going south, so we'll go ahead and close that out. Uh, we already said what we're going to do, so as long as you have that written down somewhere, you know, just a little mental note, or, you know, climb runway heading to 500, turn right 5,000. You know, memorize that, and you're done. So we're going to be taking off, and... Once there, we're going to hit kind of a waypoint over here, and then we're going to be heading southwest-ish over to Nashville. So we're done with the whole standard geography of that. Now, we finished our departure. We don't have to worry about approaches or arrivals. This is where we're taking off from. But we do need to worry about our arrival into Baltimore. So let's go ahead and search. And again, we see our airport, and we'll go ahead and jump to terminal procedures. Now we're not going to worry about departures. We're, we can get we can get the airport diagram or if we need to, but right now we're not we're going to be worried about approaches and our nav approach. And we wanted to choose the runway that was best suited for us. And for that, I chose runway 20 left. And I'll zoom in for you guys so you can see this a little better. And if that's all I can zoom in, then I will just go ahead and show you this. If I can map and 
diagrams. This wasn't where I was supposed to be at. Oh well. You can see a map of that. You're more than welcome to. But we'll go back to Aero Planner. Now, go ahead and open up airport diagram if you need to. It's the same one we saw on uh, Flight Planner. See? Ta-da! Same one. Um, and, you know, we have the north up here, south, east, west. Now, normally, as they come in, I would like to try to come straight in and landing from coming in from the north. So hitting 20 right, 20 center, or 20 left would be preferable. Instead of going all the way around and having to land on 2 right or 2 center or 2 left. Uh, there, there's 2 left. So with that, I chose 20 left because that's actually the only runway I've ever landed at when I've flown this in real life. So we'll land on 20 left. It's plenty of, run uh, plenty of runway. And 20 left is what we decided for our runway arrival. So we'll go ahead and type in left. Now our approach frequency, we'll save that for in game because they like to change all that stuff up themselves. And stars, um, our uh, standard train arrival, that'll be our final waypoints and for that we said 20 left is what we'll be using. So if we go back to Aero Planner and we're in the terminal procedures section, now let's see if we can find a um, you have Z and Y. I honestly don't know what those mean. I guess they're just different ways of getting to the same spot. Uh, 20 left for the Z is what I believe I used. Uh, nope, that's actually Y. Sorry about that. Uh, 20 left. Make sure you have the name of the runway. It'll give you it right there. 20 left. Here we go. So, coming into 20 left, we're going to hit our waypoints. Um, Wayland is where we're going to start. Once we hit Wayland, we're going to start our descent to Judd, and then there to runway 20 left. And it gives us nice information. We'll be heading in. The heading's going to be uh, 201, uh, landing on the runway, and we're going to maintain that heading the entire time in. So there's no turns in between. It's just a nice, straight-in uh, landing, which is really nice. So there's Wayland up here, if you are more of the visual kind of guy like I am. Wayland. Then we hit Judd, and then straight into runway 20, uh, 20 left. And they also, up here, they give you a missed approach. Um, if you happen to mess up on IFRs like I sometimes do, you can't see what's in front of you, you have the missed approach. You're going to climb up to 3,000, go to Atkins, and you're going to hold at Atkins, doing standard holding procedure, which hopefully you guys won't have to do, because I'll teach you guys well enough to you don't have to do that. Uh, up here... We're going to say 3,000 feet, we're going to hit that, and then by Judd, we need to be at 2,000, and then hopefully we'll get uh, Glide Slope alive somewhere around there, and then you can help follow that. And then the distance between it, 6.3 nautical miles, so you have 6 miles basically to, to descend 1,000 feet, which isn't too hard. Um, not that steep. And then from there, you know, just follow it in, and honestly, if the clouds aren't that low, then you can probably just see the runway from there. Uh, other than that, they give you these nice um, information up here, clearance delivery, which I don't listen to, sorry. Uh, other than that, um, you know, any obstacles, uh, we won't really have to worry about those. I've flown here all the time. You're, you're pretty clear on the obstacles. So if you want, you can go ahead and look at that. But this is where we change it, because if we want to... If we go back to our aero planner, where we click that, if we look on our arrivals, our stars, and we see PAL C2, well, PAL C2 was the one that that other guy took. So let's click PAL C2 and see what it says. And we see our. Wait, did I click the wrong one? PAL C2. That one might be a little better to. Nope, it won't be a little better to understand. Okay, so PAL C2 actually is a little weird because you can break into three different runways. You can break into 20 left, you can break into 20 center, or you can go into 20 right. Um, or, I'm sorry, 2 left, 2 center, and 2 right. Uh, I believe it says that right here. 2 left, 2 center, 2 right. Um, these, these charts right here, a little bit harder to read than the. Uh, approach ones. I prefer these so much better. Give you a nice little setup here and they give you main things here. So I don't like that, but it's it's 
we want one that's general to us, and we know that this one is only for our runway. So we don't have to worry about anyone else getting in our way. Uh, so again, that's our heading, 201, 2000. And other than that, you're pretty much set. So we will go ahead and delete the Palsy 2 in our flight plan, and we'll also delete the Drift. And we can go in here, when we uh, go in game, uh, you can go and look at the waypoints, and if they aren't where you want them to be, you can just delete them and then change them, which I will go over how to add your flight plan in-game if you don't have a payware aircraft, which I know a lot of you guys don't, which is easy to get around. You, all you have to do is just some typing. But we know for a fact that our final waypoint will be Judd. So put that in there. And just before that, we said was... Waylon, and we'll add that there. Now we might add a few in between, you know, just to make it a little easier for us. But other than that, that's pretty much your standard um, route there and back. And our star, we'll set it Judd. And that is more or less how you plan it. Uh, in the next video, I'll go over how to import this. I didn't want to take too long on this because I didn't want to get into all the fine details and bore you guys to death. But other than that, that's pretty much all you do for that. As long as you follow this, uh, um, FlightAware and AeroPlanner both are excellent um, resources to helping you plan your routes. And I hope you guys hope this helped someone somewhat. And like I said in the next video, I'll go over how to import this into.